Welcome to What's Up Kansas City. I'm Karis, and I am back here with my new show, Karis Harrington. And I'm joined today by Terrence Williams, who is founder of the Music and More Foundation. That's He's right. also creator of Bold Poets of Kansas City. That's Welcome, right. Terrence. Welcome. It's good to be here. How are you? I'm cool. Good. I just want you to talk to our viewers a little bit about the foundation, but before we do that, let's go back a little bit. Kind of tell everybody how you got started, how you knew that you wanted to become involved in a 501c3 or a mm -hmm. non for profit organization. Speak to us a little bit about that. Well, in 2000, uh, I started uh, Knee Deep Publishing, me and my business partner, Gary Staten. Uh, and our main project was, uh, was hip-hop. Uh, we did that for, for years and years and years. Uh, then we sort of transitioned that out of that, and I just I started uh, the Music and More Foundation. About four years ago, uh, we issued small grants to public access radio stations, the performing arts, and music organizations. Uh, and our main project right now is spoken word or poetry. Uh, there was a time when I could call on 12 poets. Now I can call on like 60 poets here in the, in the area. Okay. We produced uh, poetry events at the Unicorn Theater. Uh, then we, we got too big for that. So we ended up moving to uh, the Nelson Atkins Museum. Okay. Yeah. So you say that right now you can call in about 60 poets. So of that group of poets, what do they do? Do they typically perform regularly with you? Well, these, the poets, they, they perform everywhere, from uh, Poetic Notes, which is on Sundays, I believe, uh, 18th and Vine, uh, that's Jason Betts' event, uh, Glenn North, uh, every second Tuesday he has a poetry event uh, at the Blue Room, uh, same place as Jason Betts, he does that every second Tuesday, uh, I think it's 7 o'clock. So there's a lot of places, uh, poetry events at uh, the Uptown Arts Bar okay. with Jeanette Powers, there's poetry events all over Kansas City where we can find, find a lot of good poets at. And that's what I was doing. I would go to these poetry events, me and Desiree Rogers. We see the poets. We hear them. Uh, we ask them to be in our poetry events, and it just took off from there. Well, you know, I want our viewers to know that you've definitely given area poets an amazing platform, a place to be able to display their skills, their mm -hmm. gifts, and their talents. Talk a little bit about what that's like. What do you see in a poet that, that lets you know that they're worthy, that you really want them to be a part of your organization? Well, when I started, uh, I was just doing poetry events because it's something that I wanted to do. Until one day we were doing one at uh, the Nelson Atkins Museum. It was like 300 people there. And I had uh, like 17 poets performing. Well, I was on the outside of the door, and the door was closed, and the audience was in there, and I just heard thundering, clapping, and it was all good. Well, there was somebody who was sitting, well, Beth Sarver. She was on the outside with me, sitting at the stairs, and she was crying. And I was like, Beth, uh, you all right? Is everything okay? And she said there was something that a poet said that really touched her. And when she told me that, everything just changed for me. Now, I produce these poetry events because... There is something that a poet is going to say that's going to touch somebody out in that audience. That may change their lives. That may do something for them in a positive way. So that's why I produce these poetry events now, and that's why I make them free to the public so the community community can come out and enjoy what uh, the poems. I want to stay on that topic for just a little bit. You and I were both at um, a poetry event. I think it was Last Poet Standing earlier in the year, and yeah. I saw at Culture Chameleon. Yeah. I saw a young poet. I want to say he was probably at that time a senior in high school. Mm -hmm. It was a young guy named Unique. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. remember. Yeah, I remember sitting in the audience and not being prepared. You know, I was looking at the competition, and there's a lot of energy that goes into a poetry competition. There's a mm -hmm. lot of preparation, but there's also just a, a strong energy flow. But I remember sitting there and looking at this young poet, mm -hmm. 17, 18 years old, mm -hmm. and realizing that there was raw talent there, right. and I was amazed, you mm -hmm. know, that somebody like that who, who comes into um, an event with adults, because, you know, there were all other adults that That's were competing, right. you know, in this particular event. It was an amazing experience. It was powerful in that the poets that I saw, with the, you know, including this, this young poet, spoke from the heart. And mm -hmm. so their poetry definitely touches a place in them, and they're allowed to express that in a way that's bound to touch someone else in that's the right. audience. That's right. Do you see that a lot, that kind of raw energy and, and, and just genuine gift in terms of poetry? I see that. Uh, I see it a lot. I see it a lot. Uh, a lot of the poets that, that's been in my poetry event, because in the beginning, uh, the group was called Bold New Poets. Right. And right. I carried that name for, for a long time. Then a lot of poets were saying, well, we're not new. We're veterans at this. Right. And I was like, yeah, you're right. So I dropped the new, and I renamed it Bold, Bold Poets of Kansas City, which, which fits real good. So that's the name that we go with now. Uh, and, yeah, every poet that, uh, that's on my stage 
is phenomenal. They come from the heart. Uh, I believe in what they're saying. Uh, and that's why I created uh, the Gospel of Poets on KPRT. Uh, when we did that, everything just, just took off. I definitely want to touch on uh, on the radio show mm -hmm. uh, for a bit, but before we get to that, do you believe, and this is you know strictly opinion, I think I have my own, can you learn to become a poet, or is that an inherent gift? Is that something that you just have inside of you? Uh, I don't know, because I produce a lot of poetry events, and I get a lot of people asking me, am I a poet, or thinking that I'm a poet. Uh, I'm not a poet, but I'm a writer. Uh, I write a lot of uh uh, songs, gospel songs. I just write a lot of music, and they all seem to go together and and rhyme. So right. it's hard to say if anybody can be a poet, but if it's in you and you know how to put everything together, then I would say, yeah, you, you're a poet. You're a spoken word artist. Okay, okay. So let's differentiate a little bit between a poet and a spoken word artist. For people that might not know, the art of spoken word um, entails performance. It's a performance art. That's right. And so, you know, it encompasses actually being able to be before a crowd and allowing them to see the most personal part of your poetry. That's right. Do you think that's more difficult than a poet who simply writes? And I don't say simply to belittle it, but a poet who writes without the performance piece. You know, uh, when I produce these poetry events, I have storytellers, poets, spoken word artists, uh, all of them are on the stage. And the audience loves them all. So uh, it's hard to say whether that poet is a spoken word artist or that poet is, is a, uh, a poet or a mm -hmm. storyteller. It's all an art form. Right, right. And I just, and I enjoy it. Wonderful. So talk to us a little bit about your radio show. Um, first of all, let's give everybody the times. So I want you all to make sure that you take a look at what Terrence does with his poets. It's amazing. Not my poets. Talk about, not, not his not poets, poets, but both poets of Kansas City. Both poets of Kansas City. Okay, <laughs> so tell us about the radio show. Uh, well, let me give you a little history first. First, we started at KKFI, uh, I believe 90.1. We were there for a year. Yeah, about a year. Uh, didn't do too many shows. Uh, we decided to move from KKFI, we moved to KG KGGN, and we was there for about a year. Well, KPRT, the salesperson, was listening to us for like six months on KGGN, okay. and I suppose she was, she was digging it. So she contacted Desiree Rogers, Desiree Rogers contacted me. Well, we had a meeting with the salesperson, Aaron McGee, uh, negotiated, talked, and we end up with our own show on KPRT, 1590 AM, every second Saturday at 6 p.m. Every second Saturday. Let's make sure they get that. Every, every second, second Saturday, Saturday at 6, 6 p.m. Now, if you can't tune in uh, because you don't have a radio or you don't listen to your radio, you can download the app. Just go to uh, Google Play, search KPRT, click on that button, and it, it'll show up. Or you can go to KPRT's website, www.kprt.com. Go there, click on listen right here, and you can listen to us live. And tell our viewers, what can they expect when they tune in and they're ready to hear some poetry and they're just, their spirits and their, their spirits are, are ready to receive it? What can they expect to hear? They can expect to get poetry wasted. Uh, poetry wasted. wasted. I want wasted. you to say that one more time poetry for Poetry wasted. Poetry wasted. And that, uh, all right. Uh, Sherry Hall came up with that. She does, says that on the radio show all the time. Uh, so it's hosted by Sherry Purpose Hall. We get a lot of poets calling in from from here to Canada, all over the world. And that's only because we do a lot of promotion on the internet, mm -hmm. uh, especially on Facebook. Uh, I end up going to some of these groups that are on Facebook, poetry groups, right. finding these poets, seeing what they write. If I'm digging it, I'll click like. Uh, I'll say something to the poet, say, hey, you want to call in? And that poet could be in New York or somewhere. Right, right. So I give them the phone number, they call in. So we got poets calling in. We've got area poets uh, coming to the station or they call in. We also do a business of the month okay. uh, to help support uh, black owned businesses, okay. uh, especially uh, Leon's Thriftway. That's the store to, uh, to support. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we do a lot with the radio. Okay. We get 50,000 listeners a day. Wow. Yeah, wow. 50,000 oh, listeners amazing. a day. That's amazing. Yeah. And then the, the versatility. So you have, there's a diverse group of poets that you oh, yeah. can tune in and listen to. Yeah, diverse group. Okay, wonderful. So talk to our viewers a little bit about what you have in terms of your upcoming plans for Bowl Poets of Kansas City, for the Music and More Foundation. Right. What can we look forward to? Uh, my plan for 2015 
My plan for 2015 is to do poetry events every three months at the Nelson Atkins Museum. I'm going to have uh, the Art of Spoken Word, five, uh, Men of Poetry, uh, and then we're going to do Women of Poetry again in September. Uh, we're going to continue doing the radio. Uh, it's just a lot that that I can't mention right now. So there's definitely a lot on the horizon oh, for yeah. Bold Poets of Kansas City. Please take an opportunity to listen to the radio broadcast. It's an amazing resource for people that really desire to hear good poetry, to hear true artists. That's I right. mean, there's definitely an art there. There's definitely something that you're going to gain every time you tune in to listen. That's right. So I want to thank you again, Terrence, for coming on the show. I appreciate you being here and sharing with us. We look forward to see what Bold New Poets, I'm sorry, it's Bold Poets of Kansas City. Bold Poets of Kansas City. And we look City. forward to seeing what is on the horizon for this oh, upcoming it's gonna be season. Cool. It's going to be cool. I know it will be. It will. And thank you, Kansas City, for tuning in again to my show. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting What's Up, Kansas City. Appreciate it.